I think it was also the last hand before the break. <laughs> I was already like this in front of the monitor, like fuck, fuck, like yeah. Check, 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 check. <laughs> I check and then he he jazz like, and then I see yeah. him again, like hmm, okay, break is not gonna be so long this time. Right. now it's time to go over some hands with Emrix picking up his brain we jump right into the action and really curious what he has to say first hand here Kings I think it's a uh, high stakes tournament uh, we can look into the hand history it's uh, $500 on uh, poker stars I know it's a it's a bounty tournament it's a bounty all right dollar bounty tournament um, so flop comes jack 10-4, button versus small blind. We play effectively around 30, 30 big blinds. Mm -hmm. So what would be your plan here on the flop? Just go ahead. Don't check. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Don't check. Well, uh, no I think I'm people. fine either way. Just going small, yeah. uh, going going on the bigger side. I think both, both options. Yeah. Uh, completely fine depending depending on the strategy you're using uh yeah i think checking checking is a big no yeah uh, yeah so he calls and the turn is a seven in clubs and uh we keep betting of course i mean eight nine gets there but it shouldn't change that much yeah it's very small part and he never improved to like two pairs on the turn well maybe he has like 10 seven suited here yeah. i think a lot of the guys don't so yeah i think it's blanky enough that uh, and 10x plus flush draw 10x plus flush draw is there jack x plus flush draw I, I think i would even maybe just you know size up slightly i think he's gonna have a lot of hands to continue on the turn like if we, if you yeah. think about it like the range is almost like in inelastic like he's gonna fold fours and uh four x always and yeah King nine is almost always gonna fall, so yeah, makes, maybe we can go slightly. Yeah, okay, yeah. King nine just has a double gut shot, and even against this sizing, it can't continue anymore. Yeah, and we block king nine too. Yeah. Uh, so he jumps, and I mean, I think I, was... I would never fold here, of course, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of these spots where I think that. You just have to call it off, right? I think so too. Yeah, he's he's trying to sell you a story that he has better than kings, and it's pretty fucking hard to have better than kings, right? On that card, yeah. uh, the problem with eight nine is like if he has an eight nine, we're dead. But is he even like jamming eight nine? I think some people just gonna slow play that on the turn. Yeah. Uh, not sure what is. I mean, he. I think some people. I think why this is a call. I think some people just see. Okay, so like super joy board, and you know, I don't want to see the river. And if they have like king jack or you know hand like that, they might just jam it in on the turn. He's a wreck though, so I'm not sure he's gonna do that. He just realized you know king jack is a bluff catcher and yeah. uh, should just continue. But yeah, I think like the hands is trying to rep the hands that beat us. I think there's just not enough of them. Choo, I choo, mean, it's also hard fall. to find bluffs in his shoes, right? It has for to be sure. like queen nine in clubs, maybe, or maybe king eight in clubs, or maybe like. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's hard. But I don't, I don't think it's just completely ridiculous to see something like seven eight jamming it in. Like I don't know exactly. This is like five hundred psko. Yeah. Yeah. So, the so itself was not so impactful in this situation, so we can. Uh, we can, mm -hmm. we, we can neglect the impacts of the bounty and um, even though if their bound would be bounty impact it kind of even it's out because you get better odds right for calling it mm -hmm. out with the bounty involved but it also decreases his bluffing frequencies mm -hmm. lot, right so it, if it mm -hmm. if the turn is like an eight or nine like sure you can just you know bet fall specifically on, a, on an eight i think uh because like jack eight suited ten eight suited kind of gets there but this i just feel like uh, unless he slow plays, and I think like once you actually pick a big sizing on 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 the flop, I think a lot of the guys are gonna just pass play, you know, their sets and yeah. uh, jack tens and stuff. So it's just very hard to be beat here. Do you think but, he's uh, jamming a jack like ace jack, king jack, queen jack on the turn? Uh, I think it's potential, but this is something I would expect to see from you know recreational who's afraid 
uh, to you know play down to the river out of yeah. position and like very dynamic board. I think Reg usually like uh, should realize their hand strength is a bluff catcher and they should just call. Yeah. So I ended up calling it off. He had Jack nine in diamonds. Mm -hmm. What do you think about his turn jam? Uh, I didn't think it's a thing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe PL Solver is gonna uh, prove me wrong. But I think he feels for me is he just he has a very clear call. Like you're you're betting you know Queen Jack or better maybe King Jack or better on the turn. Yeah. Uh, and you're so like, yeah, I'm equity against that, and still I have some bluffs that I bet bet. Give yeah, and you you already like kind of like polarize your range on the on the floor already will pick the bigger sizing, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think his hand strength is is you know suited towards calling and allowing you to bluff whatever you put, use as a bluff like king nines and queen nines and. I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't he... think it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive punt because we're going to have bad folds. I think it's, it's all right, but I think, it, I, would just, I, would, I think calling has a much higher AV and that's what we should be striving for. Mm -hmm. So still against our calling range, he very likely, I mean, apart from us having ace-jack or what else can we have? Yeah, but I, th I, I, think, I think in general, like, I don't think we should have too many bad folds, high equity hands on the turn. No, so should, once we no 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 I mean I mean like even against all value hands he has some equity like we're not gonna yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean something like king queen and clubs we can bet call right or queen nine and clubs something like this with with a bounty I think. Well, yeah like super super yeah, yeah. you know super but, uh, super equity. We, we're gonna be very polarized maybe something like um the the six five combos or six eight mm -hmm. combos you know that way mm -hmm. players call call forward with his king queens and uh, and maybe queen nines uh, or backdoor flash draw like mm -hmm. 10x in clubs you know unblocking all those hands um but they're not going to call off right so it's going to be sets over pairs and strong top pairs and two pairs but even against mm -hmm. those he has very often five outs for his two pairs and trips and additional gut shot four outs so he mm -hmm. on average he's going to have seven to eight outs because sometimes if we have ace jack he doesn't have two pair outs but um uh, sorry he doesn't have trip outs uh, but he does have two pair outs mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree. I agree with you. It's not a massive punt. Like no, the ass, look at the look at the SBR and his hamstring. I think Jack Nine, like all the money should go in, like on, on all of, a lot of runouts. But I think on the churn, like <laughs> he needs to keep your, you know, eight sixes and you know, yeah. king nines into the mix. Uh, if he just if he just bet fold them and yeah, he just doesn't have enough equity. So yeah. And I think especially when you reach the stack size, 30, 35 big blinds and less, and I think a lot of beginners on, and recreationals and recreations that try to, to learn poker more and become better and make this step towards a professional, that you these there, there are certain rules that not gonna help you 100% of the time because there are always you know, some exceptions. But I think saying, if there's a jack 10 high board, 10 high board, jack high board, and you have an over pair and you bet the flop and you bet the turn, he's jams on you. There uh -huh. are certain situations where you can't fold because they might end up showing or um, showing up with hands that you can't expect. There's still going to be some some uh, some bluffs possible. You might be over uh -huh. his value hands. It just you don't need to be right so often. And even if you're wrong, it's not so expensive. You have an over pair with 30 to 40 big bands. I mean, if the board is six, seven, eight with a, a single suited and uh, you don't have the flush draw and he bet you bet the turn he jams on you okay then maybe it's time to fold but again those are very exceptional situation and it's very important that you also try to simplify your game especially at the beginning you don't need to overanalyze every single situation hey i have an over pair uh, late position battle as well in those situations you can comfortably um, calling it off, bet big the flop, bet big the turn, and if he jams, you're just gonna get it in. Um, that was the plan on the flop. The turn doesn't change so much, um, and uh, of course, if the, uh -huh. the turn would be a nine or um, an, an eight, these are would be cards that would be quite bad. But uh, apart from that, you can you can always flick it in here. Uh -huh. I agree. All right, hand number two. Uh, all right, you ready for a little punt? All right. I actually I've picked this hand. I haven't been I haven't been running a sim yet, or um, 
but it very serves serves well as illustration. I remember once you said when people pick up something on the turn, they're never gonna fold. So mm. this hand I think serves very well as an example that you should never try to bluff someone that picked up something on the turn or river. So, <laughs> <laughs> Queen of Clubs. Uh. All right. Um, Anything else that you would do apart from calling? Would you consider raising this hand? I think I feel like this is the kind of like hand. It's just very hard to pick a specific like uh, drawer you want to put it in. Like I'm fine if you bet the turn, you know, it's fine. If you check call the turn, it's fine. If you check raise the turn, uh, it's it should like the hand string is good enough. To, to fit in all all those drawers, you know what I mean? So there isn't like a very clear path what this hand uh, one wants to do. But yeah, I tend to agree like when they size this big and you go to check race, I think they're always gonna find enough bluffs in your range to, you know, trying to make King Queen fold here is, 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 is very, very optimistic, let's say. Well, I don't try it on the turn because I think that if he bets, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be ahead massively. Like if he delays bets, his his jack eight off or jack nine off or mm -hmm. um, you know his bluffs. We we have quite good equity, and I I don't think he starts betting a ten like this or a seven that we're gonna make forward or pocket eight. So it doesn't really make any sense to attack those hands because they're not mm -hmm. in his range. So it's gonna be a queen or some delayed um, semi equity bluff. Mm -hmm. With our hand, we actually perform quite well again. So on the turn. I see myself having um, a clear call. The hands, I mean, in terms of value, would probably just be nut flushes that I keep check calling. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think he thinks you will check call nut flushes on the turn? Hard to say. Hard to say. It's a good. It's a good question because at the end of the day, we want to play according to what we think our opponent might think about us, right? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you think your own range is going to be. It's it's a valid point. Probably not. To be fair. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter, like, how good is is, is your story. Like, so let's say you're bluffing. It doesn't matter how good your story is, in your opinion, if it makes no sense to your opponent, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, um, <clears throat> so I call. All right. River is the three in, in spades, and, uh... Oh, he goes very big, too. Yeah. All right. He he has it feels like better than Queen X. No, maybe he has like King Queen with the King of Clubs here. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's definitely optimist. But I mean, like, we should have a bluff catcher too, right? Yeah, I'm I actually I was thinking that, but my problem was that I think that most people they would go for like one third 40 percent i think the turn sizing really bothered me for me it was either shuffle or fold mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. i think they wouldn't be bluffing with this sizing quite all i think it would just you know have a draw we take his air and um it kind of <clears throat> it kind of strikes me more as a he wants to build a pot now with his hand like a, a good queen mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but i think it just in hindsight i have to say it just um He's supposed to bet forward some Queen X, right? For sure, but are they? That's uh, the that's question. The problem, yeah. Yeah, I think people struggle to bet fold like any value hands, in my opinion, in these kind of spots, unless it's like very, very high spots, you know, deep in tournaments or deep in big tournaments. Yeah, yeah and uh, I just felt. I mean, maybe I was leveling myself also, you know, he has, he has the occasional ace jack, ace king with one clubs that we get out. Um, mm -hmm. but again not very consistent in my thought process because he would size it smaller on the turn mm -hmm. um, i don't think they would be, would go so big um also blocking a lot of three x like jack three suited and the ace threes you know the, these are like the high cut three x are the most like we're not gonna have eight three off or nine three off or seven so i mean it's not a huge thing but it makes some sense so it just it's just unnecessary in this spot. I think so too, yeah. It's just so unnecessary. It shows just so high variance. Even though mm -hmm. I would now pull up, pull up here, that's why I'm not pulling up Pyro, because even if it would tell me, yeah, it's it's a bluff according to GTO, I'm pretty sure that uh, how many Queen X our opponent is supposed to fold is not going to happen in reality. Mm -hmm. It's just so... Because 
to, to find yeah. enough bluffs here. Once you check jam, once you check jam the river, you are playing the game of I have flushes or better, right? Yeah. Or maybe even like not flushes or better. Uh, not sure how many flushes are actually non not flushes are strong enough to just go, you know, I check think call. You can shove every flush here. Uh, once you go check call, check, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And we, well, I to be fair, we have all 10x in clubs, right? 10 dues, 10 4, 10 5, 10 8. Yeah, yeah. but how many? Ch but I mean, I guess, like, what do you think is the like, at what frequency are we just check calling, like, something like 5 high plus on the turn versus like putting more money and just well, betting bigger? Well, be the strongest. Uh, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so too. <sighs> Uh, but yeah, basically don't need any protection at all because he's never going to have a set. So we have 100% equity. Mm -hmm. What does he have? Like king queen with a club? Uh, I think he has ace queen. All right. No club. All right. And that's not even a good bluff catcher because you are playing a game of I have a flusher better, right? Yeah. So his blockers, he should be bet folding that hand uh, on the river, definitely. Because you have flushes, right? Yeah. And some bluffs. Yeah. So he doesn't really have like any blocker to a value range. Yeah. Queen Jack with the G Jack and class would be much better. But I think people are too much stuck in an absolute hand strength and call ace queen king queen and then start folding like queen a, you know, or queen a. And probably even call also all the weak queen eggs with one club. I think if he has. I mean. Ace King with the Ace of, uh, but I mean, yeah. What what bluffs are you gonna use? Maybe Ace King with a king of clubs me i'm not i'm, I'm three betting ace king pre no no i'm thinking like in his shoes on the button is it better to have ace queen or ace king uh with just you know flush blocker i think ace king is a stronger bluff catcher when you're playing the game of flushes and better right yeah he might feel ace queen is higher in my reigns but it's not really i mean higher maybe, maybe we're shoving queen 10 for value like he's He's going to be C betting so many flush draws. He only maybe has like the ace, like the. But even even ten x and flush draws just, just too good to not to C bet. Mm -hmm. Maybe some some really occasional slow play flush draws. Mm -hmm. But he's going to hand up like his his top of the range is just going to be one. I think even queen ten might be, um, a check shaft. So I think having a queen as a calling hand blocking queen ten isn't too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel like Queen 10 taking this line, how often is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, you probably want to raise the turn, right? Raise the turn. Like, there's so much equity, right? Yeah. Queen 10 feels like it, want, it wants to charge your opponents, like, per max. Yeah. I think, once again, when if you play, like, if we're talking about, like, the other... Is, like, yeah. <laughs> everything happens at some frequency, right? Yeah, that's also always a valid excuse. Oh, it's a frequency play. Yeah, frequency play. Yeah, I love it. That's why, for example, I don't use randomizers. Um, I think mm -hmm. they just make you... Um, it's it's very easy to get susceptible to r randomizing a lot of things instead of thinking things through and staying away from frequencies play. Because very often mm -hmm. you can make... You can think in black and white. Good opponent mm -hmm. to bluff, not a good, good, good opponent to bluff. It's very often just a very binary thing. Like there's so many situations where you can heavily over bluff and, and every single every single hand that is showing as a good bluff in Pyo is also a good bluff against his opponent because he's slightly over bluffing. So you don't need to play a game of frequencies. You can, because this situation is not gonna happen again. It's it's a tournament. Yeah, for sure. For it's sure. not gonna be an iteration of thousand situations gonna be play playing against this very opponent again. So you can completely go hardcore because he can't re-exploit you. He can't. It's not. It's 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 not a Nash equilibrium. He cannot respond to that. So mm -hmm. that's why you can you can choose whatever you want to do against this opponent. It makes sense. The same if you play against a calling station. The same. There's so many spots. You know, for example, this one. If I know he has a queen against a regular, I have. I don't have a bluffing range. Mm -hmm. Right. You you don't think oh frequencies, but I think that randomizing makes you lazy it makes it so easy to mm -hmm. uh, randomize the bluff here like 30 percent frequency i'm going to bluff here no and i mean come on how many situations are going we're going to have where we really need an, uh, uh, a randomizer i i actually use i use it sometimes but i think for me it's 
like a lot of the time is almost like a mental thing you know you end up in a very very difficult spot on the river and you're truly like you know not sure what to do so inst instead of like forcing your brain to make black and white decision i sometimes just okay i go 50 50 and i mark the hand and go over after the session you know and that way you kind of like signal to your brain at the same time so i'm not just you know 100 calling or 100 falling i'm you know doing doing both ways and think at the same time specifically in like high stakes pools i think there's going to be like decent amount of like pre-flop spots where at least i'm not sure if calling this hand is going to be better than like tree betting this hand and it kind of like makes sense to have this specific hand in you know both tree betting ranges and both calling let's say ampi opens and you have something like jack 10 suited like 100 bit blinds in the cutoff yeah. like just a hand that just wants to be in both ranges, right? It likes Jackson. Well, Jackson suited just wants to be everywhere. It's a fucking pretty hand. Uh, but it's nice you have it. And, you know, your tree bedding range is nice you have in your calling range. Sometimes a good hand to limb. Sometimes a good hand to go all in with. But yeah, it's, you know what I mean, right? Well, of course. But uh, I think there's always, always something we can, we can pick up on is, for example, who are the players in the blinds if, if there's some guy mm -hmm. you know i want to have involved i don't three bit this three bit this hand ever mm -hmm. i mean for sure of course you know sometimes you're really in that situation all right P people are solid behind me and it's really either or i can do both mm -hmm. i mean depending on your mood you sometimes going to be three bidding you sometimes you you have this internal randomizing anyway mm-hmm right and um or what's the situation on the table i mean if there's um let's say a, two, uh, a recreational player who already doubled up who has 200 big blinds and then maybe it makes a little bit sense to also you know against the regulars then to go for three bet and more often play a bigger pot to also you know mm -hmm. get a bigger stack to have necro stack um mm -hmm. 150 160 200 big blinds with the recreational i mean these small details then it's it's a 0 0.00 whatever ev decision mm -hmm. made, right but i think there's always something you that you can find in order to to make a better situation i mean it's not gonna it's 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 not evil or it's not gonna destroy your game to randomize but i think at least for me i'm not saying it's gonna work for everyone uh -huh. at least for me there's no room that i can blame the randomizer or i can put an excuse on the randomizer and say okay yeah it's 30 percent player okay i'm gonna randomize you know i always have to uh -huh. think through and kind of like randomize for myself then at the end uh -huh. actually yeah i've talked with sam and pat sam and pat's neither need to use the randomizer too for me it's always been kind of like well not always i haven't used it for that long but it's 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 i think from i feel like it's just helpful specifically in those kind of like super super tight situations where it's just very hard to say 100 percent to calling 100 percent to falling yeah uh but i very rarely like you know i'm gonna bluff this 30 percent or i'm gonna do yeah. this it's when it is yeah i agree just we're never that good, I yeah. think, unless you're cheating. Yeah. If you can figure out some to do something at 25% frequency, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you grinded too much PS or maybe it's time to, you know, play a bit more and Street you know do something else, you know. Yeah. All right, last hand. So guys, here, don't try to bluff people off something that they've picked up on the turn. I mean, again. Not saying this is a bad bluff catcher as you can see i'm gonna have my bluffs and um but i wouldn't be surprised if if, if the average player not him in particular i don't know him i don't want to say he's a calling station or whatever but i think on average um the player i'm going to play with uh, in the ace queen hand is not going to um is not going to um forward a lot of queen eggs down the river all right, this mm -hmm. one was very interesting. Uh, Lucky Fish opens the button and we defend King-10 off. Um, would you reshuffle pre, would you just call? You have, what do you have, like 10 bigs? Yeah, uh, 11 yeah, I think, points. I think just call, yeah. Okay. I think we, like King-Jack, King-Queen is gonna be the hand strength that wants to go all in here, yeah. thing. Unless you, unless you have a very clear read that he's, you know, super yeah. out of line, but I don't think he should be. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> You're thinking about leading. I think it makes sense. Uh, on mm -hmm. like basically at this SPR, if you have a pair, you have the nuts, right? Yeah. And we're gonna have more pairs here uh, on yeah. on this board. So yeah, 
and he should have like more jack tens and 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 stuff in his range. So I think like just betting betting small. I'm not sure. Can we do it like 100% of the time? Is this hand gonna do it? But I think uh, we should definitely have leads because yeah. if we don't. He is. He should have like pretty high checking frequency on this board, right? Yeah. And that should mean like we need to force some money in because once we have something like let's say you have Jack Five here, yeah, uh, that, sure. yeah, that hand is strong on the flop, but it's very rarely very strong on a lot of turns. So we want to force money in, yeah. uh, because our opponent is just going to do a lot of checking and try to realize his equity on turns and reverse. Yeah. So goes check check turn as a king. Very interesting card. Okay, well, which is better here, betting or checking? That's a good question. Um, this is a this is a, by the way this is a, like when you have a king here, like do we really want to bet all our kings or do we really want to check our kings or do we want to bet specific kings and check specific? Uh, I would I would approach it that I would take my highest equity hand, so let's say. Um, that that don't need any protection. So let's say um, a hand like let's say a hand like ten five uh, or eight five wouldn't mind leading the turn. I mean he he still has all the ace queens in his range, like queen jack jack ten also. Of course he has some king x, but his non paired range is still so wide. Um, uh -huh. And and we also have some hands that probably still have very decent equity like 7x or uh, 6x and we, we're also going to have a bunch of very good hands that can easily um, bet call so you cannot just go ahead and, 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 and bluff jam or bluff I um, mean bluff raising is probably not a thing anyway um, but a hand like 7x or deuce x really struggles check calling again especially against the big sizing uh -huh. so yeah, now the question is which kind of king eggs we want to start leading here. And maybe may, but I mean I'm I'm thinking about maybe we just if we do, if you don't want to randomize and like from blockery perspective it's kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh I guess like having having a jack or a queen, maybe we want to be checking uh when we have like some well i mean king queen king jack we cannot really have so yeah it's pretty difficult if you think about blockers like what do we actually i was thinking like checking king jack king queen is actually like pretty sexy we don't because have king jack king queen right yeah exactly uh so maybe you just you know split your kings in half and you know check some and bet some yourself like you know bets check king deuce to you know king seven and bet 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 better yeah yeah, that was what I was thinking that like King 8, King 9, I think is pretty King 9, King 8, King 10 would be would be good bets and like king, checking King 2 is King 6, King 7. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's whatever. I would definitely sometimes check, sometimes bet here. Uh, I decided to check. Um, uh -huh. Or would you be betting all of your King X? Um, I think it's, it's like I'm not confident enough to take that exploitive route, right? Uh, I think I can definitely see benefits in both plays, and if that's the case, and it, it feels like we need to check some king access to protect our range, otherwise, you know, we're just exposed to having five x or or worse. Yeah. So he goes for quite a big bet. I think there's no point in raising, right? Mm -mm. Clear call. Very interesting river. <laughs> so of course I was like, what? I'm not gonna go anywhere. Um, things was, too thin. I was I was thinking, I mean, this is also a river we probably want to be leading a lot of the time. We're gonna have mm -hmm. so many two pairs and four sevens and five sevens and three seven mm -hmm. suited and and, and 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 um maybe. Some. It's very yeah. It's fucked up for river for sure. <laughs> it's fucked up because like I feel like if we if we actually start leading in this blocking king axe, like it just feels very thin, no? Yeah. Because he can easily have better, but what worse is he's never gonna check like queens and jacks in the flop, right? Yeah, exactly. And is he really gonna bet like ace five? I mean, he doesn't have ace five, so yeah. he needs to like either call something like ace queen on the river, which I think is very optimistic assumption, or then 
check the flop and bet the turn big with something like ace three, which is very optimistic too. Yeah. So it just feels like I think we just check, or maybe you can just bet like three big blinds. I don't know. Bet four, three big blinds. <laughs> I don't know, maybe bet call. Maybe he does something silly with Ace Jack. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun... Just check, I think. Just check. Feels. I think this is a spot where we're just going to be polarized. Like, we shove our straight two pairs. We check our one pair hands, and we're going to check calls, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what kind of bluffs? Just missed flush draws? I think so, yeah. yeah. We just jam our missed flush draws. And I think not the highest ones, because I think... The highest ones kind of like blocks some of the hands we want him to have too, right? Yeah. I think if you look at like, he should definitely check back some like queen jacks and uh, let's say ace 10 of diamonds. So having those high diamonds in your hand is not GTO, but yeah. He definitely, he definitely tanked for a bit uh, and then he jams the river. So of course, can, it's, it's hard to find bluffs here. But it's also a question of what kind of value hands are you going to jam for value? I call, I think. You just call. Just, yeah. I mean, we I block. Was, I still, like, I was tanking for a long time because I it, it was hard for me. Um, because I don't think he might be value shoving king, queen, king, jack. I was thinking maybe he does. Like, I, I don't know. Because maybe he just assumes yeah, you're going to jam, bluffing, you know, like, straight. See, see bluffing random ace highs? Is he sizing it up on the turn like this? Like, to me, the, again, turn sizing screams like value. Like, this delayed sizing is just so fucking greedy. So what do you think? If he if he has, like, ace jack, do you think he's going to bet two big blinds? Yeah. I don't think it's, like, that big. If he goes, like, four bigs, maybe that's big. It's, but it's, I think it's just people are going to delay bet, like, one third pot. Like, you know, so it's one like protecting against some 10 9. Mm -hmm. This kind of protection game. I, I, I don't think they try to target pairs already on the turn to fold out. Mm -hmm. I can already I can already see, like, if I would post this hand to someone like Sam, I think he would he would probably find the fold. I would just flick in the call. I, 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 I was thinking for, like, I just didn't see any reasonable, like, not, of course, they're reasonable mm -hmm. bluffs, but. I think it was also the last hand before the break. <laughs> I was already like this in front of the monitor, like fuck, fuck, like yeah. Check, check, check. <laughs> I check and then he he jazz like, and then I say yeah. again, like, hmm, okay, break is not gonna be so long this time. Uh, yeah, it's but yeah, I ended up calling as well. Uh, I mean, maybe we can fold king nine. Um, maybe we can fold king eight, even though we block. Eight. Maybe even like king ten is not the greatest, like. Yeah. I think we want to have allow him to have like something like ace 10 or like queen 10 of, of space let's say yeah. so maybe like just calling like king nine king eight is is going to be better but do you, yeah it depends it depends on like how wide he yeah. but are i think call, are you going to call any six x like six eight six nine in case you i would feel i would feel like that hand shrink is 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 probably like no the, i'm comfortable laying down six acts right on this on this run out if he ends up betting because he's basically trying to tell me a story i have you know ace uh maybe he has like king queen or ace king um yeah. king queen king, king queen or better so yeah maybe six eight so, is a hand that we want to call six eight okay yeah, just eight seven is a pretty logical check back on the flop, right? Yeah. All right, so, but yeah, it's a fucked up river for sure. It's, because uh, it's now it's your turn. What do you guess he has? What does he have? Yeah. I mean, he is he is one definitely yeah, one shot. One hand. Yeah, of course. Wow, let me think about it. I mean, it has to be interesting because you wouldn't you wouldn't do that if it's not interesting. Uh, no, I picked the hand itself. It's it's definitely an interesting hand. It's not so well. It depends how you see it. But I picked the hand because it's an interesting river. It's an interesting run out, and also a very unusual stack size to play post flop in rivers, right? So he has an unusual hand, Jesus. It depends, like it's not so unusual, but... I'm so fucked up, I'm just <laughs> thinking he does something. <laughs> you fucked me up, like I, I don't know what to say anymore. Uh, 
I mean, he's repping like. I think his value ranges are are pretty well defined. So I actually don't know. I, I'm not gonna guess. I have no fucking idea. I guess he has a bluff, right? No. No, he has a. Well, it depends. What does he have? Something like queens here? Kinda, yeah. So jacks, no, queens, king eight. Uh, yeah, that's why we have to call. Yeah, king ten. I wasn't actually thinking about it, like king eight, but yeah. Would you gen? That? That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Something I think we we deselected too. Like king, this is why king ten is you know terrible call on the river, right? Because he value bets him in verse. It is, so it's a terrible call. You said no, it's it's a, a terrible call. So you just flick in before before he puts in all the chips in the middle. You already called. Yeah. With a king ten, right? Yeah. That is ten. Yeah, it's too bet. thin. I think. I think so too. Uh, but at the same time, like how often you're checking two pairs on the river or straights? I know you're greedy, Ben. <laughs> Why I'm fucking. Not? I'm all in. If I have a straight here, there's no fucking way I'm checking. I'm. I'm all in. You know. But I also know my, you know, my friends in high stakes poker, and I know which ones can make some unusual plays as well. Yeah. And that's of course. I'm not trying to balance my my checking range with strong hands, but I try to balance. Then, if I think someone's capable of doing something unusual or um, value betting thin or bluffing, then. I'm not gonna fold, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Let's say more than what P Pio or GTO is suggesting to me. But even mm -hmm. though I think this here, I would probably fold six X. I think we should be calling some six X on the river. Because mm -hmm. like six, yeah, yeah, six eight for example yeah. is probably. But I think against populations, fine. Like delay, delayed is just being so heavily underbluffed. So especially. Bad check bad or check bad. I think that churn is actually. I wouldn't say that churn is under bluff, but I think that river that will river, be that under bluff. That river, yeah. Yeah, that turn out like All people cards, just push. Yeah, can you know just be randomly stepped, but then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, fucked up hand, fucked up run out. Definitely very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but good, good that you call. Would be so sick if you shows you king h two here and you yeah. yeah, but it's never gonna happen. Yeah. So if you fold, you never know. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, inter interesting ad for sure. All right, Aramix, thank you so much for for joining us here today. Also taking your time to going through some hands. Also really enjoyed the podcast. No problem, my pleasure. See you soon at the tables. And All right. Maybe we're gonna see you here again. Uh, I'm sure we are because we're gonna already. Uh, mentioned that in the podcast with pets this topic around the current state of online poker is something i want to uh, uh -huh. keep alive that people are getting aware of it i think that's that's very important i agree and um maybe we find some solutions some ideas what we can what we can do uh -huh. positive and productive about it but i think um the worst thing we can do is try to ignore it and also what we tried in the in the past with you know just having a, a, a selected group of people talking about this issue we should not forget we're just only one percent or as you mm -hmm. percent so we should try to get everyone on board and raise attention make people aware of it and then hopefully have an impact thank you so much good luck okay thank you and um, then see you soon my friend